Okay, so, you know, flame outs with the Husky kind of become a problem for me. Uh, when I was up riding, I had this, I dumped the bike over and it, it, it wouldn't just kept dying. So then I idled up the bike using the, uh, you know, the idle, the idle screw in there and then it, it kept doing it. And it was really puzzling to me. But what I found had happened is when I, I didn't even know what had happened until I installed the, um, you know, when I upgraded the bike with removing the emissions. And what I found was when I dumped the bike, you know, they talk about how the factory little um, jiggly thing in there isn't very good. I, I would agree with that because what had happened was when I removed the, the little hoses and things that come out of the EVAP canister, um, they were full of fuel. And, and I had dumped the bike over like a month earlier. So what that showed me is that this... When you dump your bike over and you fill this with fuel, the canister with fuel and everything, I don't think that the air can properly come in here. And as the bike's running, the fuel level's dropping and you have to be able to get air through that breather or else you can't, you can't get more fuel. So looking back, I really think my problem was that as this, once this was filled with fuel, I dumped the bike over. I think my flame outs were because it was having trouble sucking the flu, the, there was a restriction here, I'll say. So I went with this um, free flow air vent tube from Takomoto. And I, I'm not affiliated with Takomoto. You see, I've got their stickers and stuff. That's just because I think they're cool. I, I have no affiliation with them. They just, I've had good luck with their products. And um, so I put this free flow um, on. Now, once you do that, um, you're gonna, I just went all in with, with emissions. Uh, taking the emission stuff off so then you know I removed the canister up in there which you could leave um, and just cap it off here and here there's a taco moto kit you'll need their emissions removal kit and their evap canister removal dongle which that dongle goes in 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 here this wiring here um, and I plugged it in just kind of stuck it up there and zip tied it but there's you've got your evap canister thing that you unplug I was actually making a video on that and I just had I don't know, I lost the footage it, it, without belaboring the point. So sorry, I couldn't deliver on that, that video. I tried, but, um, so to make a long story short, I am, I did the O2 delete. Okay. Using the taco moto dongle that goes in under the gas tank where the O2 sensor goes in. Then you get a bung plug. I removed the O2 sensor com completely. You could leave that in if you wanted to give the appearance of running an O2 sensor. And then you remove all the hoses. You put, I went with a, a plug in here. I went with a plug in here so that you could, you can see that. There you go. Barely, sorry. Um, that the screw comes out of that. When you pull that hose off of there for your EVAP system, you put a plug on that. Um, you put a dongle in where your O2 sensor is underneath your, your gas tank. Just remove this stuff. Put it, put the Takamoto dongle in. I used another manufacturer's um, dongle and it caused the bike to run poorly. So I, I did have good luck with the Takamoto one. Um, and I used their little piggyback fuel controller, which um, is right in here. I'll show you this. So here is the Takamoto EJK fuel controller. I just went with their settings that they recommend and it just kind of, you know, goes up in here. The wiring easily goes up in here and it just plugs in behind your throttle body. Easy, easy, easy to, to install. Just, just trust me on that. Um, little footnote, pro tip here, but dielectric grease on these little things and on the grommets, it makes these covers a lot easier to, to remove. Um, so there's the little fuel controller. Um, I also took the reeds out. For me, the kind of riding I'm doing down the highway and on trails, uh, it, it was a good choice. I rode the bike a time or two with the reeds in and didn't really have problems with it. The bike just seemed a little restricted. So don't want to give you the idea. You have to pull the reeds out, but I did. Um, I did put the best dual sports little metal cone in the intake. Uh, when I took the reeds out, but you know, if I could go back, I wouldn't have worried about that. I don't feel that's a restrictive point on this bike, and 
I would just take your reeds out, put on the fuel controller, um, get this little, um, you know, air vent on here so your bike can breathe. I did do the, the best dual sports bike kit for the, the, you know, the fuel tank here and the filter, an upgraded filter in here. But, you know, honestly, performance wise, I don't know that it really, I gained much. So, um, in the final analysis, if you know what I would do, if I could do it over again, I would take the reeds out. Um, but if you're doing lots of technical stuff, reeds in isn't, isn't a wrong choice. So don't want to make you think you have to pull them out. But what I did is reeds out, fuel controller, because if you give it more air, you got to richen it up or else it's going to be a problem. Got this on here so that we can get air into the tank. Got the emissions off. Oh, put the dongle. You remove your canister thing, or you could leave it on there, and I put... You plug a dongle, a Takamoto dongle, canister removal dongle into that, put that up there. I got my O2 sensor dongle in here because I removed the O2 sensor. Then we need to uncork this. So I did use the best dual sport bikes um, end cap. It looks nice. It's black. You just remove these screws, pull off the old one, the factory one. I'm using the factory can. And then I put the silencer in that you could, I didn't notice any restriction in power when I did that. Just makes it a little quieter, or you can. It's real easy. It comes with it, with this and a screw, and it has a spark arrestor in this, so it's, um, you know, safer to use up in the forest, which is important for me since we're around drive around a lot of trees. Um, and so it's worked really well. I have had uh, no more flame outs once I did that. Once I got rid of the the whole canister system and emissions, I've had really really good luck with this bike. Um, so once again, reads out, fuel controller, O2 delete, O2 dongle, canister dongle, Takamoto emissions kit to plug the holes of your canister and intake when you take that off. And I've, it's been flawless for me. I haven't had any engine error codes. Some people have those. I haven't had any engine error codes. I'm so happy with the way the bike runs. It runs to me like a... A dirt bike now and I haven't had any flame outs and honestly I think the biggest part of getting rid of the flame outs for me was getting rid of the emissions so that simply put I could get air into the tank as the bike was using fuel and the fuel levels dropping that air could come in and replace that I think that that canister system is a restriction because that's really the main thing I changed um, that, that seemed to immediately stop that and when I saw how much fuel was in my canister system um, I was amazed. I guess there is a plug on your canister system, you know, with a hose that comes down here. There's a plug here, probably lets the fuel out. Maybe if I had done that, um, it, it wouldn't have, it would have let the fuel out. So I guess if you are going to keep running that whole system, that's fine. But maybe just pull that plug out and drain the, the fuel out of your canister so that it's not, um, so that air can get into your tank. So that's all the upgrades that that I did on this bike. Um, I've been really happy with it. It hasn't given me any problems. Um, I hope this helps somebody out there, uh, especially the part where the bike was kind of flaming out. That was really, really annoying and, and unsafe at times when you think you're gonna be under power and you're not. Um, so I hope this helps. Um, like I said, I do have videos on this submount, Scott's steering stabilizer installation, the dielectric grease behind the ignition, behind the mask for the ignition. Um, I did one on the canister, you know, for the um, coolant system. I did one on actually the drivetrain when I was upgrading the drivetrain. Used some, some tools that was, were helpful. And I'll have other videos to kind of have an oil change video on the 350. So um, hope this helps. Get the kind of the kinks, bugs worked out of your bike. But since I've made these changes, it's been a, just a pleasure to ride my, definitely one of my favorite bikes that I've ever had for riding off-road and technical situations. So um, like and subscribe. There's more to come. Keep riding. Have fun. Let the adventure keep going. Another thing that I want to talk about with regards to flame outs is I, you know, you listen to things on the internet and you always wonder what's going to be helpful, what's not going to be helpful. Um, and I'm used to big bore bikes like a 690 and as you can 890 over here, um, 
and so I've ridden lots of five. I'm used to larger bore bikes, and I found that with the 350, a lot of times you're better off just keeping your throttle constant and then feathering the clutch. And so I found that to be really, really helpful. So um, hopefully, you know, that, that was a good tip that I got from somebody out there. Just they were talking about 350s are a little different. Um, when I'm riding this bike, and yeah, many times I'll keep my throttle, like if I get in a technical section, I used to just always modulate with the throttle. Now, if it gets real technical, sometimes I'll hold this a little more constant, not wrapped out or anything, and then I'll I'll just, just feather the clutch. I'll just take this clutch and feather it as I need to to modulate power to that rear wheel. Um, I think that was a good tip. And even before I did the the full upgrade on this bike with the kind of all those, the emissions delete, I guess you could say, I, ha I, I had fewer flame outs once I adopted that riding style of keeping the throttle a little more constant and then, you know, feather in the clutch just when I got in real, real technical sections. Um, but still, I did have flame outs until I put on, d deleted the emissions. That was, that was a game changer to me. But I thought it was worth mentioning that um, I think riding style matters. And I think these 350s, um, and I haven't done clutch weights or any of that. I, I like the blippable nature of this motor. I don't want to change that. Um, so that being said, um, I've had really good luck once I started to change my riding style and just started feathering my clutch through the technical stuff rather than just, um, trying to do it all with my throttle. And a lot of you guys are, I'm sure are better riders than me and know, knew that. But when I heard that tip, um, I, I, it was a game changer because I usually just tried to keep my clutch out to spare the clutch and then, you know, do the modulation with my, my throttle. And on a bigger bore bike, actually you can do quite a bit of that. Um, but I, these 350s, I think I think that working the clutch a little more um, is a good thing. So thank you to whoever you were out there that I watched. I'm sorry I, I would totally give you credit, but I can't remember. You know, you watch so much stuff that it's hard for me to remember who who it was. But that that was a game changer for me. I cut my flame outs down by about 50%. And then when I put did the rest of the, you know, intake, fuel controller, free flow, tank kit, dongles, um, that's dual sports end cap. That, that really solved a lot of problems. That solved it, finished it for me. I can honestly say I haven't had a flame out since. So um, just want to talk a little bit about rider um, error though, or, or how, you, how I ride this bike differently than some of the other bikes I've ridden. Like my 690, man, that thing, it was heavy at times and technical stuff, but it would chug. It would just chug 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 you could chug that bike great bike uh and it, it was really hard to stall if you stalled that 690 out you were if you flamed that thing out you were doing something wrong <laughs> you know so whereas the 350 though uh they're not as chuggy they, they like to rev so just i guess something to to think about all right keep riding